Hey guys, you're looking at the Continental Divide, covered in snow, chalk mountains, just east of here. And I just panned us out. Doing a little wind test with the new camera and we're coming up on the geothermal greenhouse. Now, the video, I'm going over some rough terrain, so hope I'm not getting you dizzy. You can see the uh, tractor is up with a 100 gallon water tank, gravity feeding into the greenhouse currently. Well, that's because we're putting some water features in. All right, we've arrived. Bees are real active. Let's see how the zoom does with the bees. This is one of our hives uh, right next to the greenhouse. Busy bees. So we're gravity feeding some water in here and I'll, I'll bring you in to show you why. It's been freezing outside here for weeks. And hopefully we can check the numbers. So the hose is coming in, filling the water. We've already got some more stacked water all the way down, hundreds of gallons. Course. The main temperature gauge is missing. What's outside? Let's go get that. Follow me and we'll rescue it. Looks like it's 59 out. It's probably colder because it just fell out the window. The low in here was 37 the other night, high of 101, and it was 27. So it's only a 10 degree difference. Uh, and we need to get that up because it's going to freeze in here because this place is amazing. And we don't want anything to get damaged at all in here. And these little watering. Look at these poblanis, tomatoes. Everything's delicious. Look at how beautiful that tomato is in the back here. Holy macaroni. Oh. And you can see we let some go, but still good production in here. Even the black tomatoes, just amazing. This is a cold weather, like a Siberian. And let's just eat some of these for dinner. As you can see, they're quite plentiful. I mean, I've been eating tomatoes like a king. Five dollars a pound. For organics. And look at all the varieties. Now these cherries. You know what a sun glow is. And then by having biodiversity like this, we can come in here. Ooh. And just look at the layers non-stop I don't even have time to eat all this and that's good because there will come a time when I will have time to eat all this including the basil flowers which I still nibble on now the flowering arugula some parsley Gorgeous hatch chilies. Just been producing for months. Look at the size of that baby. The pineapple sage is flowering and I wish you could smell this. I wish you had smell of vision It is amazing. So the object in here 
is obviously to continue to grow abundant amounts of food. Look at these poblanos and medicine. That looks like some spider mite activity. See it, guys? So we're going to have to pull that immediately. Maybe we'll do a video on how we spray for spider mites. So by adding all this thermal mass, what I found is if I can get, so we're going to have 250, 350, 450, about seven, almost a thousand gallons in here. I want to keep the temperature 15 degrees above the outside to bring this up to zone eight. And because I have such small volume, that is possible. So we're going to see what happens when the systems are full. Now what I want to mainly do the video on is supporting your water features. I've had catastrophic floods in here as I was trying to assemble this. These flexible ones you probably saw me put in, I stacked them and they collapsed. Even though I put wood, they still bent. So then I went out and got these rigid ones. And those collapsed as well. So what I had to end up doing was screw in these cedar redwoods or redwood supports. It's your call. And now they're bomb proof. And I'm filling it up. And we'll update you on the uh, thermal mass. Because just with the geothermal systems in here. And look at the mushrooms. Wow. Fantastic. And right next to that mushroom is a very rare European it's called the Portuguese, so a walking stick collard. A very rare seed I sourced on the internet. And that should grow into a tree collard. You can see the big stem on it. It's amazing. And so that's going to be fantastic because it has an associated mushroom with it. Mycorrhiza is probably banging. A mosquito plant. And we're just coming uh, into our own here. The uh, biodiversity just got started back in March when we put the first seeds in the ground. So, you know, we're seeing what develops. Got some strawberry in there. And you just, this is like a, it's almost like a scavenger hunt here. That's how biodiversity is. And that's really what you need. See what works. Look at all this basil field we have in here. Here's a variegated variety that just showed up. If you ever see a variegated basil like this, you will if you have a permaculture greenhouse and just let things go to seed and pollinate itself. Happy little guy. Here we have a green bell. Still coming up. I'm about to plant some Francini. Picello Rapacante. Um, these are snap peas. So they should grow all winter in here up my trellis. So that's what I'm working on today real quick. Got a lettuce bed in here. And that mushroom is a beautiful sight next to the uh, collard tree. Which I grew from seed and now that's been going for months and look how tiny it is. So it's a very uh, unique heirloom. Another pepper in there. Mustard. Some of Leah's work. Thanks for joining us on the little thermal mass excursion. Remember, so now this is getting some weight and we're seeing what's happening. Uh, the last three times I did this, this collapsed and flooded, but because of the new supports, I think we're golden. So we're going to see what happens. It is tilting a little, but this is a rigid container and it's now screwed together. And I do want it to tilt a little towards the sun. So we'll probably fill this you know, six, eight inches from the top. There is plumbing to drain these, so think ahead. And the water's been sitting in here in this greenhouse for uh, months. Oh, I don't know how long that's been off. We're in the geothermal greenhouse here, and we're putting some more thermal mass in. I got a gravity feed outside here. And a dog, <laughs> garden it all. And this is our fresh well water. 
coming in here. Now, I had to add some supports, and you're, we're in here live as this is filling, so if we have another Noah's Flood, you'll witness it live. I have some spider mites here. I'm going to get rid of that right now. But we have some nice biodiversity going on, some gorgeous zinnias. Look at that, on oh, fire! Beautiful petunias. We're trying to keep the temperature up in here, around zone 8. So we can continue to harvest buku tomatoes towards Christmas um, because I eat a lot of tomatoes. So we were having a problem here. I was using these soft black containers and they were deforming and, and each time we filled them they were flooding. So I went and sourced some of these hard rigid Rubbermaids and they even deformed. So I had to put in this redwood racking, which you can see here, three of them. And because each one of these containers holds one about 110, which is 880 pounds thereabouts, that's a lot. Mm. So check out the mushroomy right next to a very, uh, this is a four month old Portuguese walking stick collared. A very rare seed that I sourced. This has been growing for three months now. And it should grow into a collard green tree which will survive in zone 7. Which we're trying to make this greenhouse zone 7. And we're doing it with thermal mass. Our well water. Ooh, which is crisp and clean and drinkable right from the tap. You can see here the tomatoes are flowering amazingly in here. We have an indoor temp of 71 because I've been having the door open, but we've gotten down to 37 so far this year. That's the low, and that's bad. That's almost freezing. Last night was 27, and it's forecast to be in the low 20s starting Monday. So we need to get more thermal mass in here to keep the temp up. So I've had the door closed all day. This water is now much warmer, probably in the 60 degree range, which is a 60 degree heater all night. And these black tanks will help bring the temp up. An additional several hundred gallons that won't flood like Noah also helps. So we're adding that. And so far what we've been able to maintain is 12 degrees extra. And I'm looking to hold 16 to 18 extra to get this up to zone 9. I was eating strawberries earlier. We have basil and celery. Carrots, amazing beets everywhere. Look at the size of these in here. Holy macaroni. We have uh, some amazing perennial leafy greens here that taste like lemons. Mm. This is French sorrel. I recommend you get it if you're going to homestead. We have a field of different species of basil and sage and all kinds of tomatoes grown through in these vines. I've got uh, eggplants dropping everywhere in uh, when it's 20 degrees outside in the high desert. These little Asian eggplants looking fantastic. We do have a little infestation, which is good. You want some bugs in here. We're trying to regulate it. A little bit of aphids and some mites. A nice little dill I just noticed. Didn't even know that was there. Oh no, that's fennel. Little licorice, anyone? Wow. Fantastic. Fennel. And lots of heirlooms. Just ripe for the picking. So, I mean, look at the new flowers down low. That's a whole second generation of tomatoes coming in. Fantastic. And this... This is a uh, Canadian ground cover tomato called uh, Tom Thumb, I think, which I picked up and should perpetuate forever. I mean, these seeds are just dropping off, so these seedlings keep coming up in here. Here you see some. They should make it through the winter cycle. If I just let them keep dropping, here's a basil just coming up. About to plant 
some snaps for the winter in here along this trellis. And we have all of this arugula seeding and it's amazingly delicious. And we have parsley to snack on. These hatch chilies. Holy macaroni! We got another uh, celery plant back here. Mmm, that one is tender. Amazing amounts of tomatoes. And dill popping up. Dill seed. Self seeding itself everywhere. Sprinkle them around. Nice lettuce bed. Got an endive in here. Some medicinals. Really nice big kale. And on and on. And I'm sweating to the oldies. Thanks for watching. Leah was just talking about uh, making some kale chips. We're going to do it with this white kale here. We have abundance of it. All you got to do is harvest it all, dry it off. Toss it in a big uh, bowl with some oil and salt and put it in the oven on a cookie sheet. Flip it every five minutes at 350 until it's, uh, the moisture is gone. And then you can preserve these in bags. They'll stay for a while. Google kale chips and do it. A great way to, uh, if it gets cold, extend your green leafy products for your uh, homesteading purposes. Kale's easy to grow. So I highly recommend it. And I wish you guys were here to smell this pineapple sage, which just started flowering. Amazing. Thanks for coming, guys. Be safe. And that's boom. Mr. Stripey, get out of Dodge. Still Saturday, October 13th. I just wanted to share with you these beautiful alyssum. They grow to zone two perennially, which means in the Arctic Circle. And they're flowering fantastically. Everything else in Pagosa is basically dormant and dead, except my permaculture orchard, where we have Dusty Miller and Whorehound right behind it, and oregano and a gorgeous alyssum, which is two years old now. This is a rare form of lavender. I think fern leaf, which is taken, thankfully. And look at that <laughs> 18 inch, 10 pound cabbage. Amazing. We got a second flowering here of the Dianthus inside. And some Asian kales are doing nice. Another white alyssum. Pretty awesome. What's going on here? It's amazing just to have successes like this. How important they are. <laughs> Look at that cabbage. Holy macaroni. That's a bone.